There is exactly one week between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The Aseret Yomai Tshuva, the 10 days of Tshuva, the first two are Rosh Hashanah, the last one, Yom Kippur. Always exactly one week. So to this year, Rosh Hashanah ends on a Tuesday night, and exactly a week later begins a Yom Kippur on a Tuesday night. And there is an amazing idea as to the power of these seven days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, uh, seven regular days, so to speak, with enormous spiritual power. Says Rav Yonatan Eibeshitz, the great Talmudist, Halachist and Kabbalist of the early 1700s. In his book, Yarot Vash, in the beginning, he says, this is what is special about these days. Every, every day of the week is encapsulated in these seven days. And we have an opportunity, so to speak, to rectify the, the previous year's actions on Sunday of Sunday's actions, Tuesday, Tuesday's actions. We have an opportunity to try and live an ideal week. We all know that so many of the things we take upon ourselves and would like to be and commit to during these times, we are unable to do it and see it through the entire year. You know, you can go on a marathon, you can run hardest, you can work out in the gym, but you can't always keep up that pace and stamina. It's impossible for an entire year. But perhaps you can for a day, as we do on, on, on Yom Kippur, and perhaps we can even for a week. And therefore, this week is the, the opportunity to create an ideal type of week, the type of week we ideally would like to live, even if we cannot continue it for the whole year. That indeed is the reason why we find the Shulchan Aruch this custom, seemingly unusual custom, of taking on customs that you are unable to keep up the whole year. The, the, the Shulchan Aruch brings the example of pat akum, of uh, you know, bread not, uh, you know, not under Jewish supervision, which under certain circumstances is kosher, and it, one can, can eat it, but one should take on this chumrah, uh, this stringency, during the, uh, this week until Yom Kippur, even if you don't continue it afterwards. Isn't that just ingenious to do something that you're taking on during this time for a week and not continuing for, out the, for the year? No, because we're not doing something that we, 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 we know we are able to do the entire year. We're simply trying to do with this one week, live the most ideal week that we can, try and tap into the higher version of ourselves, even when we know we are unable to continue it. And that is our great opportunity each day of this week to try and live the most ideal day of the week, to rectify all those days of the previous year. And I want to end and say, we come to Shabbat Shuvah, this unbelievable Shabbat of Teshuvah. Let's try and make this Shabbat Shuvah the most ideal Shabbat that it can be, to do a tikkun for all of the Shabbatot of the year and have in some type of aspirational idea of what we would like it to be. If we normally struggle with Kabbalat Shabbat and don't dab in Mincha, let's try be early this time, bring in Shabbat early, the, the 18 minutes, Daven with fervor, Onik Shabbos, songs if we don't normally sing, let's do it. Be in time for the Tefillot, have a Surah if we don't normally do it. And bring out Shabbat after the time, meaning let the Shabbat be a Shabbat of Teshuvah, an aspirational Shabbos of trying to make it a Shabbat of doing a Tikkun of the whole year, an aspirational one of how we would like it to be. And Bezrat Hashem, if we try and live with tapping into the ideal version of ourselves this week, it'll spill over Bezrat Hashem into the year for all of us with a Gemar Chatimah Tova, wonderful, healthy and happy year. For everyone. Shabbat Shalom, Shana Tova.